Hey there, everybody. My name is Eli with PremiereOnScript.com, and thanks for stopping by for this video where I want to share with you guys information about accessing direct selection in Premiere's API. Now, by direct selection, I don't mean direct selection in the timeline. We've covered that in a previous movie. I want to talk about direct selection in the project panel, which would seem to be like a pretty obvious need for an API to be able to see what we have selected in here, but it was actually just recently added in the update to Premiere 12.1. I know we were a little ways away from that, but it's always a good time to go back and see how this API feature works because if you come into the Adobe sample code and look for it, you're not really going to find anything. They kind of slipped uh, these features into these other functions. Uh, it's not very clear how they work, and it's also not documented in the uh, Premier scripting guide. So today's a good day to go over it. Let's jump in and get started. Just to show you why I find this feature so useful, I came out recently with an extension panel called Find and Replace so that I can find and replace text easier when I start up my projects. And one of the features is a direct selection where I can go in and select what I want, replace what I want with new text, and it works really fast. I select exactly what I need. I honestly don't think this tool would be quite as effective if I didn't have this direct selection option. So let's come out into the code and see what we got. Uh, the first chunk of code I want to show you is pretty much copy and pasted over from the sample code. Uh, once we get down here, I'll show you how you can start using this and filtering items out or isolating items so that you can get kind of more out of this feature. So the first thing we have to realize is that this feature is built uh, with the knowledge in mind that Premiere can now have multiple projects open in it. It's been that way for a while, but in order for Premiere to know which direct selection you're targeting and which project, you have to specify which project you want. So the first thing that we're going to do is declare a variable, call it view IDs, and then go app.getprojectViewIDs. Now, just to note, these view IDs are different from project document IDs. That's something that tricked me up a little bit when I started using this, so just know they're different. Uh, you can then come down and go through a for loop through the number of projects that you have open. Now, I would recommend, just as a side note, to use this when you have one project open because I found some quirkiness uh, to say the least, when I have multiple projects open, specifically when I have multiple projects open and then I close just one, sometimes that project still lives on and kind of bugs up the code a little bit. So that's just my recommendation. It works pretty flawlessly when you only have one project open. But we'll make a loop through the number of projects. Note that this is app.projects, num projects, not app.project, singular, like we would usually use. And then I'm going to make a variable, call it current project, and then from these view IDs, I'm going to run app.get project from view ID, and then include the for loop iteration of this view IDs array. Now, if that current project exists, we're going to come down and say if the current project.document ID is equal to the app.project.document ID, meaning what is the project document ID that is currently registering as the actively selected project panel? Then we'll come down, create a variable called select items, and then run app.getProject view selection with that view ID that we have kind of running through this whole loop um, as the target. And then that will alert us our selected items. So right now I have five items selected. If I run this, it should pop us back an alert with five project items. And it did just that. So this is all great. And just this alone is like still really useful to us. But, but I'd like to do a little bit more with this information. So I wrote kind of an evolved loop of what we had up here, down here. And I'll share this on the blog website. If you want to go over to my website, premiereonscript.com, you can download all this code, use it, and learn from it follow along with the video. But what I first want to do is I want to declare an array and call it final array. This is going to be the final array of all the project items that I'm collecting in this loop that I'm doing. The key is what I want to do here is 
I would like to filter for bins. That way I also include items inside of bins. That way if I select, say, these three items, but then I also select the sequences bin, my direct selection will return me not just four items, as it would in that previous loop, but uh, the three items in the videos folder and then all of these sequences that I have here. So in order to do that, we're going to come back to extend script. I'll create this array, final array, and then I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did above. I'm going to do the current project, the get project from view IDs, if current project, document ID equals document ID. It's all the same stuff. But when I run get project view selection, I'm going to store that as this final array item that we created up here. And then what I want to do is I want to pass this final array item through a helper function I wrote called return bins. And all this is going to do is I'm going to come down here to my function list and it just passes in an array, creates a temporary array, loops through the original array, asks if the select array, the array that was brought in type is equal to project item type bin, push it into this temp array that we created. And then when that loop is completed, return the temp array. So what this is going to do is it's going to return us an array of the bin items that were in this project view selection. From there, I will do a loop through those bins, which in this case would only be one because I only have one selected. And then I will create a variable current bin, use a find bin index helper function, which is going to which I also discussed in a way earlier movie, you'll find in this sample code that I'm providing a more refined version that's a little more reliable than the one I presented in one of my first five videos. But you pass in your starting point, which we're going to start at the root item. You pass in the name you're searching for. I'm searching for the bins uh, B name. And that will return the current bin that we're iterating through in this for loop. Now, the final step of this entire process is to take the final array and make it equal to add children to array, a third helper function, which is going to pass in the current bin that I just returned, along with the final array that was originally holding all of my selection items. Now, what passing in this array is going to do is I'm going to pass this array in and then I'm going to return the array back out. So it's just going to kind of spit it into the next function and then spit it back out as the result that I want. It's destructive, but it'll work. What this function does is add children to array. It's super simple. I'm just going to, as I said, pass in the bin, the array, do a loop through all the children inside of that bin, and then push them all to the array that I passed in and return the array back in. I could have just included this code right on here. I just felt like, you know, I had one, two, I was getting too many for loops in this chunk of code and wanted to just pop it into a helper function. So now that's clean and ready to go. And if I uncomment what the final array will be, I'll select, say, these three items and then these two bins. And when I run this, we'll see a whole bunch of project items coming back, which are going to be these three and then what's ever in these bins. Now we can also see what's that length going to be. Um, and we can do a little for loop here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through this final array and just like kind of giving you a peek inside what the find and replace panel does. I'm going to just add on this text to the end of each name that I'm pulling back so that you can see that it is working. I'll select these three. I'll select these two bins, and then I will run the code. We have all those project items. We have a total amount of 27, and then it's going to go through and add, adding this on to all those items. Right in there, right in there, and we included the source bins as well. So this is really just going to show that if you look in the sample code, there is you know, the feature's there, but you need to customize it a little bit more to get something really meaningful out of it. Now you can filter for, you know, 
Now you can filter for all sorts of things. You can filter for bins like I've done here, but you can also look at if things are sequences or clips or miscellaneous, meaning like an adjustment layer or a color mat. So I hope this helps. No really groundbreaking like results that come of this, but absolutely essential to building extensions. And once again, if you guys uh, want to check it out, the Find and Replace panel is going to be out on the Adobe Exchange probably by the time that this video hits YouTube. So check it out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.